to every human disappointment in order to say, I'll take it, to every grace that God offers to give us. At the Pentecost, we believe that the Blessed Mother was present. Um, we know that she, she was together with the Apostles always after the resurrection of Jesus. And I think it's important to think about that today because nobody knew how to receive a gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit like Mary. Mary was the first recipient of that gift at the Annunciation. And if you remember, Mary has to question Gabriel about how this can possibly be that I'll become a mother, she says. Now she who was without sin had this imperfect understanding of herself, perfect understanding of what her mission was. And that had to be clarified by Gabriel in order for him to say, yes, I'll take it. I'll take this grace that is offered to me. And so I love the idea that when the tongues of flame divided and came down on each one of them, they were all looking at Mary. How does she take this? How does she talk about the gates of hell will not prevail against that? And as these tongues of fire divided and rested upon the twelve apostles and the Blessed Virgin, who received it as a gift, they were given this power to speak about the miracles that God has done, the great works that God has done. Number one among those miracles is that He has sent His only Son as expiation for our sins. That that Son gave of His life um, so that we would know that God can come no closer than He already has 2,000 years ago. That is a gift that can never be taken away from us. And as we read the history of the early church, everything else was taken away from them, except the only gift that really matters, the gift of sonship in the Father, the gift of a fraternal relationship with His only Son. I no longer call you slaves, Jesus says, I call you friends. And they went out. And what did they go out to do? They went out to tell other people about the fact that through Jesus and with Jesus and in Jesus we're all sons and daughters. We have a Father who knows us. Who knows exactly where we are, who knows better than we do how we feel about things, and that there's nothing to fear now. Through Jesus, with Jesus, and in Jesus, there's nothing to fear. And there is no reason not to say thank you to the Lord for that, for his promise that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. So conflicted after the decision to close Our Lady of Lourdes Church for the healing and reconciliation of any words spoken in anger or frustration, and for any relationships that remain broken or strained. For the unsung heroes of Our Lady of Lourdes Church, who have contributed so much of themselves to the success of the parish. For the dead, especially those buried from this church over its 130th year in history. And for the many other prayers we hold in our heart this day for the world, for those who have suffered in body, mind, or spirit, and for our local community.